The podcast Glee Boot has no affiliation in any way with Fox, Ryan Murphy, or any of the creators or producers of the original series Glee. Select clips of Glee are used for editorial purposes under a fair use license. Hi, I'm Cullen. I've watched Smash. Hi, I'm Hannah, and I watched Smash. Hi, my name is Alyssa. I did not watch Smash. (laughs) We're in Cullen's bedroom, which is inside Cullen and Alyssa's apartment, and I am visiting from my current abode in Florida. We've had two earthquakes since I've been here. <laughs> that was crazy. Two days. I will be the reason that SoCal breaks off from the rest of the country. So we're here because all three of us went to grad school. And, and while I was in grad school, <laughs> Hannah had this idea. No, Cullen, you're like, <laughs> hey, I've heard of Smash, and I'm like a musical theater person. I was like, oh my god, I remember like kind of enjoying Smash. We should watch it together. So... We did. We're broken now. <laughs> okay, for the record, I am not here because of that. I'm here because I'm Cullen's roommate. So. <laughs> so she was not subjected to the torture that is Teresa Rebeck and Steven Spielberg's. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> my innocence has been maintained. <laughs> yes. So as I screamed my lungs out during uh, the big finish final number of Smash, oh. I was like, well, what show are we watching next? Because now that Hannah was far away, it's how we stay in touch is by getting drunk and watching these shows over Skype. And I was like, six seasons of Glee, baby! <laughs> and I was like, sure, I love torturing myself. <laughs> we decided to call this podcast Glee Boot because this is our long-form audition Because we are writers, this is our long-form audition to be part of the inevitable Glee reboot. Especially now that Disney owns Fox and the entire Disney music catalog. Fuck! (laughs) Oh my god! (laughs) The entire Disney music catalog is open, so get ready for the Frozen Glee episode. So wait a second. If Disney owns Fox... No, that's an FX show. I was like, do they also own American Horror Story? But no, that's <laughs> FX. Thank God, that'd be awkward. Now, let's talk about our relationships to Glee. Alyssa, why don't you start? Oh, okay. My relationship to Glee is basically nothing. I have <laughs> watched one season and I don't remember it. There you go. Cool. That's it. <clears throat> so, I think I've seen most of the show. I know I've seen, like, the first half of the first season, which is, like, quintessential Glee. Quintessential. Ah. Nails it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's actually, like, really quality content. And I know I've seen that, like, a thousand times because I've owned, I own it. But, like, I stopped watching after a certain point. I think it was probably, like, after I graduated high school. And I was like, I'm not invested in the show anymore because I'm an adult. (laughs) And, yeah, I, like, I remember watching the episode, spoiler alert for Alyssa, um, when they have... I'll just come to I covered my ears. I covered my ears. (laughs) I can't When they had a, like, school shooting... And it was really... I heard that. It was... I thought you were covering your eyes. <laughs> they had like a school shooting. That's the last one I remember watching because my friend was like, this episode's bananas, you have to watch it. Also, I think it's really important to note that I am from Ohio. The setting of Glee, Lima, <laughs> Ohio, a like, real place. Lima, I've never been to. I think it's in Western Ohio, like up by Toledo. Never been, don't want to go. But yeah, that's my relationship with Glee. Everyone send your condolences to Hannah to being from Ohio. <laughs> I'm so sorry for her every day. Colin, that's same only way. because you're from Michigan, which is this, the superior <laughs> state. Um, so, my relationship with Glee is it was on in high school, and I would my mom would watch it, and I would like see it out of the corner of the room. But it was on the same nights I had debate, and I was like, oh, I'm cooler. Than the other theater kids, I'm better than Glee. Like, I watched, like, The Office. I'm an original person. (laughs) Um, And then 
we watched the pilot in a screenwriting class in college, and I was like, this is a great pilot, and then, like, I'm gonna watch this show. And over the series of years, I'm a terribly slow binge watcher. I watch, as in I don't binge. <laughs> I watch up until the set, the last episode of the third season, because I'm like, they're graduating, all the main couples are together, they are doing well in the club, like, the show ends here, it ends here. But like, all this time I've known it did not end there, and there's more Glee content. <laughs> you know, like, a, a school shooting. <laughs> <laughs> And I've, like, looked up and read what happened because I thought that would just, like, destroy my desire to watch the rest because we all know it's bad. But that desire has been there. And I think Glee was just a very socially important show. I think it had a big impact. And I think, to me, because I was the same age as the kids, like, they graduated when I graduated, and I think it's the same for almost all of us, Mm -hmm. is that, like, I connect those feelings with high school. Like, it's super heightened, and, like, it's not really how high high school is. But, like, that's what I associate, like, with those feelings of being in the Midwestern town, wanting to get out, wanting to, like, make yourself heard and feeling kind of, like, oppressed by your environment. And so, like, I definitely connected with that even when I was in college. I listened to their song, their cover of Tongue Tied, on repeat the day of my graduation (laughs) of both college and grad school. Uh. I cannot wait to start talking about the music. But I do have to say, like, my... The first thing I remember about Glee is being in my friend's house in, like... I was probably, like, ninth grade when it came out. And we were sitting there, and they're like, oh, yeah, there's this cool show on called Glee, and they put it on. I literally was like, this is stupid, and I hate it. (laughs) And then, like, I actually went back and watched the first season... I was like, oh, actually, I really like this. And then it was, like, hugely popular. I was super jealous when my friend went to, like, the Glee the tour. Glee concert. I was so pissed because he didn't even ask me. Not that, like, I would have had the money to go. But, like, he didn't even ask me. <laughs> I think that's why we're not friends anymore. <laughs> I do remember Glee being, like, very a very popular show and everybody talking about it. And I'm pretty sure that's why I did not watch it. I think Glee made everyone in my high school gay. (laughs) (laughs) But no, like, I remember a lot of people being really attached to that show. Like, people who were really attached to it ended up, like, being able to talk about the way they felt about their sexuality, which I think is really important. Especially in, like, a super, super small uh, Midwestern town where I came from that, like... People were empowered by it, which I think is really important, like Colin said, to point out. But Yeah, uh, like you said, it was... What What did you say? But they it ruined was, so many it was songs. Social, it, was it was socially, socially important. important. Socially important, <laughs> except that they ruined a lot of songs. But they also made some songs really good. <laughs> we're well, talking to you, Christmas rapping. <laughs> 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 Best Christmas song ever and better than the original. <laughs> it's... Yeah, I just I feel like there's so many thoughts I have about Glee that are escaping my brain right now that I will talk about later. When they come up. Yeah, like, when they come up. Like, I... I guess, like, I'll say that... I talked about this with Colin before, that I say I hate Ryan Murphy. But ultimately, what it comes down to is that the show kind of just is all ups and downs in terms of, like, quality rather than just, like, the drama... And that really upsets me because I think Ryan Murphy has a lot of really interesting and cool ideas. Like Scream Queens I thought was really interesting, but I just didn't think the execution was that great. And so it made me really sad. So I'll be talking about how sad I am about Ryan Murphy a lot. Sangry. Sad angry. (laughs) Sangry. Sangry. Yeah. Let's drink! (laughs) An important uh, part of this podcast of Glee Boo that we failed to mention is that we will be drinking. It's the only way to get us through. (laughs) Though I I do like to point out that when we say, say, like, oh, let's get drunk and watch this, it usually means, like, we have one drink because that's all we can afford at the time. And drunk on stress. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it's the holiday, so we actually have some extra alcohol. So this the one spoiler I want to give to people as they watch the show, if they are watching along with us, and something I just want Hannah and Alyssa to know as they watch every moment of Glee content is that it is revealed in the final season that Sue is a clane shipper. I just think it's important that we all know that. Just a moment of silence. <laughs> we just okay, I need to point out here 
that I have no idea what you're talking about. You'll, cool. It'll, it'll come <laughs> it's to a, your mind later. It's two people who are in a relationship that she supports. I don't understand why that's a thing. For everyone out there who doesn't know, I'm reaching out to you. We are the same. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Let's go watch some Glee. I'm going to finish this beer and we're going to watch Rachel Berry be Rachel Berry. Also, no, I'm going to save it. <laughs> it's one of my favorite random moments of uh, continuity issues besides the fact that like Tina never gets to speak. I love Tina. <laughs> Tina. Tina. Pour it out for Tina. <laughs> so we just watched the first two episodes of Glee. How do we feel? I... I am so annoyed <laughs> with the adults in the show. And I think, like, I was talking about how in the, the pilot episode, I struggled to care about literally anyone because Mr. Shu and Terry were so obnoxious. I hate the adults. That's how I feel. Yeah, not gonna lie, I was kind of bored. Um, especially with the pilot Sometimes I wonder, like, how shows continue after the pilot. Because they're just, they can, they're supposed to hook you, and then they just don't. Like, what is it about the pilot that hooked people? Don't stop believing. Right, it was the music. Yeah. The potential for the music. But the second episode was so much better in terms of story. Yeah. Colin, how do you feel? I feel like... I think the pilot... Because the pilot literally hooked me that time I watched it in college. Yeah. I think watching it now, knowing what Will Schuster becomes... (laughs) A monster. (laughs) A monster. (laughs) The worst character in all of television... I had more trouble watching it, and I was mm-hmm. like, when do we get to Rachel and Finn? Because the kids were just much more interesting, and the whole backstory which, behind why Finn chose to sing Don't Stop Believing, which is basically this thesis of the show, mm-hmm. and they're like all performing together, and they're matching costumes, and their little red shirts. Okay, to be fair, though, I did mention this when we were watching it, their performance was boring as heck. The only thing that made it interesting was the camera work. Because yeah. it's for TV. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if you were in the audience watching that, and like that was supposed to be like their performance, you would be like, okay, cool, they're having fun. But, but they're also, not good. <laughs> I'm, not ha- I'm not having fun. <laughs> <laughs> they're having fun, but I'm not. How do you feel? This was something we discussed and we have contradictory opinions on the value of the Don't Stop Believing cover. I think it's a great cover, but I don't think it's, like, the best version of the song. No, and I'm not, a, and not. I'm not really a purist at all. I just think the Journey version is better. I think, like, yeah, I, I'm not, like, a purist in any sense, but it's a good cover. I definitely understand your point about like the ending. It actually ends and it has moment it has actually has momentum that carries through to the next episode. So like I see that point. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is the best version of Don't Stop Believing. I think Blasphemy. I think journey songs always have a hook that I really like, but they never deliver on it. Don't they do Don't Stop Believing for regionals? Yes. Yeah. I feel like that would, I would have to listen to it again. Because I'm picturing them in their golden black shirt or dresses. That's, that's how I, they do yeah. that. I bet their performance is a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, there are more people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's more movement happening. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I just think, yeah, I like, there's a lot more emotion in the singer's voice in the Glee version, and it has a, it comes to a big head at the end, like, it reaches a climax, which yeah. is like a musical theater thing, Yeah. more so than like a rock ballad thing. Oh, definitely. But yeah, that's something. That thing. Rock, rock ballad <laughs> technically don't end. They technically just fade into, into oblivion, the but they're technically still going. <laughs> which is something that as I've gotten older, I realize like why I appreciate rock music, but I never really want to listen to it is because I like it when a song ends. <laughs> and you can move on. I can move on with my life. I think... It sort of just, like, occurred to me, like, one of the reasons I think I hated the pilot so much and I hate the adults so much is that they're dealing with, like, regular people issues, but the kids are dealing with things that I think are, like, they're obviously serious because that's what they're going through, but they're heightened, like you said, yeah. and it's more trivial, but, like, Shu is dealing with possibly cheating on his wife, and his wife is going to, spoiler alert, fake a baby, and, like, it's, like, really gross adult stuff that I just don't want to watch in a show that's supposed to be about teenagers. I want to watch, like, Finn have to think about the time he hit a mailman so that he doesn't, like, come. Ejaculate. So. <laughs> <laughs> For just a second, can we talk about how terrible... Mr. Shu's wife is. Oh my god, Terry's the worst. I thought you were going to say, can we talk about that mailman and how he definitely died? (laughs) (laughs) Finn murdered someone and no one's talking about it. His mom was like, oh my god, you killed him! That is quality content. But yes, Terry Schuster. I literally walked in from the kitchen and was like, Terry Schuster is the worst. I've just been pounding the pavement all week after Glee rehearsal. I, I can't find any extra work. Probably means no grand foyer. Why can't we ever be the ones to catch a break? I don't know, it's gonna be okay, baby. I mean, we don't need a grand foyer to be happy. No, you know I, what? I'm so tired of the compromising. I want my grand foyer. I want my dream house. I work hard. I sacrifice. I deserve it. <laughs> like, I... She's... Oh, that bathtub scene haunts me. The only reason why I, I cared about Mr. Shu is because his wife is so terrible. But he also just, like, puts up with it. And, like, does that really make him a good person? Or does that just make him an annoying pushover? And I hate him. And, again, I think it's also because, like, I know what happens with that relationship and him going forward. That I'm like, why didn't you just get out? Like, I know what's waiting for you. So maybe that's part of it. But also, like... He They're has both no the worst, and maybe they deserve each other. <laughs> I think Terry is a really gross, shrew, harpy wife character. Well, what did we say? She was the reason the patriarchy was created. She's mm-hmm. pre- like the patriarchy is correcting the world <laughs> from her, from Terry Schuster. And then Rachel Berry then destroyed the patriarchy. With the line, with- girls want sex as much as boys. Yeah. In the celibacy club meeting, which I honestly literally thought was a joke until you were like, oh yeah, like that was a thing. And I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. Because <laughs> that I did not realize was a real thing. Yeah, like if we were going to talk about anything sex related, but no one would ever say the word sex, you would split the guys and the girls and... It was this thing where they'd be like, hey, does anyone have any questions? And like, you did not want to ask a question. Wait, you like, so this was your an name. actual club that you would... I was not in a celibacy club. I was in like youth group at church. Or like through... I was through a religious order. Uh-huh. Um, and we'd meet at like the women's center. and. What like, was it called? Uh, Christian Life. Okay, that's... But it was a Catholic youth group, yeah. And so we'd, you, we didn't do that every week, but every time there'd be a sex week. And there was one... When I went to the... Sex week. Not sex week. It was like chastity talk. I yeah, yeah. Show. That sounds about right. And so the... Cause, which is... Chastity is technically different than abstinence. Because chastity is like a lifelong thing. Yeah. Um, and then we would have... They had that at the other youth group too. And I just remember like there's always that... No one wants to ask questions because teen, teenagers are worried about sex. But there's always one boy. I mean, I don't know what was going on in the girls' room. I wasn't there. But... There's always one boy who would, like, ask, like, 
too many questions or just something uncomfortable. And, and he's I, like sitting there taking notes. Like, I don't. I don't even remember what Dennis asked. Dennis, your last <laughs> name. <laughs> You're on. a pervert. <laughs> like it at the time was like gross, but like. It was probably a normal question. And it was always, also, like, Dennis, you're a hero for <laughs> but, trying to get information to your fellow men. But it was so... I just remember him raising his hand, and it was, like, so awkward. And, like, sitting, like, sitting in the chapel, like, dying. And I... And Jesus is watching. <laughs> like, I, I was, like, we secondhand embarrassment because he knew everyone was judging him. Also, we were, like, can we just talk about how we're, we're talking about this as I sit on a t-shirt quilt... <laughs> On top of the t-shirt that is for, what was it for? Catholic Student Society. For Catholic Student Society, and it's the Nike sign, but with prayer beads, with a, with a rosary. <laughs> Just pray it. So, I feel like that's really fitting. I'm glad we chose your room <laughs> as the thinking. setting. There's also, like, other religious items in here, so it's it's definitely great that we're talking about Celibacy Club. Just like Quinn for Bray, I bring people into this room, and we make out, and then I say... Let's pray. <laughs> In my breathy voice. Oh my god, let's talk about Quinn for Bray. Wait. Let's pray. She's pretty terrible in this first episode, but like in the Quinn for Bray way. That like she's just so Hi. captivating <laughs> to watch because she's so cute, but she also does have like this really interesting, like innocence about her but she's also evil it's kind of great <laughs> she's an interesting mean girl in that you can see why she'd be popular because she's not just mean she also has this wholesome look yeah but also in this second rewatch i'm realizing how attractive emma is oh really she likes the red hair ginger. and like her cute <laughs> little outfits and she's so put yeah. together and she has those big eyes and then when she finally, Doesn't like... She does have a very clear fashion sense. And when she stands up to Ken and is like, I don't want to date you. And then she does. Which, uh, and then when she's like, Will, what are you doing? What are we doing? I'm yeah. like, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think, doesn't she make reference to Rachel, like, you could be like me someday? Is that a thing that happens in the show? I guess we'll find, we'll out. find out. I think so. Because I think I remember something like that. And I remember Rachel being, like, horrified. But she does remind her to be thankful for the fact that she doesn't have a gag reflex. <laughs> Wonderful segue. Ray- what was Rachel doing in there? She was, she was, was she trying up. Yeah, but was she trying to be bulimic? Was yeah. that where I, she yeah, failed? I yeah, think she so. was trying to be bulimic and she failed. That's why, <laughs> shout out to the pamphlet jokes, all of Emma's pamphlets. Oh my god. And the so you like throwing up bulimic. Here's, here's like the giant difference between the pilot and the second episode is that like there's a clear style in the second episode that carries the show for the rest of its run but the pilot doesn't have as much of that and I want to know why like is it they just hadn't figured it out yet or probably probably or did it get cut because Fox was like ooh I don't know about some of this I just I don't know because literally they do Don't Stop Believing, and then their next big number is Push It. Push it. So, like, there's a <laughs> jump there, and I love it. I think the first episode wanted to appeal to as many people as possible. Yeah. And the second episode was, like, trying to... We're carving a niche. And it... The second episode was much funnier. Like, can we talk about... Like, laugh out loud. The push it scene. (laughs) Where Leah Michelle is literally, like, humping in the air to the beat. (laughs) Fucking fit. Like, it's... And he's, like, a giant, and she's tiny. It's hilarious. I loved all of the reactions in that scene. Sue they were amazing. Sylvester, my <laughs> ancestor, <laughs> is literally so good during every scene that she's in that like I actually forgot how amazing she was. The push it think... scene, she has this like delicate hand over her face. <laughs> yeah, and she like laughs and then she's like just like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> 
Like, no one has used their full potential in the first episode, and then more people were used to their potential in the second episode. Also, though, the second episode did give us white rapper Mr. Shu. Uh, <laughs> we all hate it, because we all know. Oh. Well, I don't know if we all know, but he's going to be rapping Vanilla Ice very soon, and that's going to be even oh, more upsetting. Than him rapping Kanye, <laughs> Gold Digger. I she ain't messing like, with no broke guys. bro. <laughs> well, you know, it's just... It's not going to be good. But also, I love how that scene started with, Hey, Mercedes, do you know this song? And she was like, yeah, I do. And the underlying subtext was, because she's black? Is that what you guys are trying to say? Awkward. Okay, so the funny scenes, though, because we all know, just Gold Digger, awful. Put a bow on that. It also belongs the, in hell. The, the connection the show is making is like, yeah, he's singing a song about... A guy who clearly has been manipulated by a woman by getting pregnant and then found out, like, it wasn't his. And then it's like, okay, but, like, he picked that song. Is it not registering what his life is? Like, to me... That's, like, an, a weird... It's a very Glee thing where they pick songs, obviously, because they want it to relate to the story, but the characters sometimes don't realize it relates to the story. It's yeah. really weird. They're not in a story, Hannah. They're in their lives. Yeah. Exactly. And then you would think he would be like, Gold Digger, my wife literally wants me to change my job and make more money so that she doesn't have to work at Sheets and things as often as she really should. Because that's what every husband thinks when they hear the song Gold Digger. Exactly. It's just... I don't know. I just don't like Ryan Murphy. (laughs) <laughs> That's the first reference here. <laughs> oh, so we have Push It as a laugh out loud hysterical oh scene. Oh my god, cackled. Every time they mention MySpace, <laughs> quality. Quality. <laughs> the pamphlets. Oh my god, those are so good. The one was Radon, the silent killer. And I was like, what? <laughs> Why is that a thing? Um, oh, the, the... Well, I guess if we want to go into funny, but the cringy scene with the chalk dust. Oh, that, uncomfy. that was uncomfy. <laughs> um, is there anything? I feel like there was another thing that was really funny. There's oh, nothing ironic about show, show choir. choir. That's a great line. Leah Michelle had some. Rachel had some great lines. She had nothing. I, there's nothing ironic about show choir. And she then, had. I my wanna, neighbors are are filing a lawsuit for her singing. And then Finn is funny just in general because he's a dope. Like the prostate thing. He thought he told his friends his mom was getting her prostate removed. Also, when he hit the mailman. When he hit the that mailman. That was because I forgot that was a thing. Just his singing in Push It, where you could tell he was, like, a nervous high schooler. I thought that was good. Kurt's, like, jiggling of the <laughs> pack, that was uncomfy, but very funny. And just, like, the whole choreography of that number is just so good, because, like, Artie's in his chair, rolling around, and then, like, who is it, Mercedes and Tina get up, and they're, like, bouncing their asses, and he's, like, it's quality content. So, speaking of inappropriate theater things, um, when I was in It's a Wonderful Life, I was... (laughs) The Cullen Corner. (laughs) I was supposed to get kicked out of... Me and my character was supposed to get kicked out of the dance, um, and so we were supposed to do something dirty, and the theater girl who I was paired with, like, came up with this, like, thing where she would wrap her leg, like, around me. Mm-hmm. And the director was like, that is too foul. Like, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, my God. And so I can't remember what we ended up doing. But it was kind of... They almost had me do the thing where that Finn and Rachel do and push it where, like, she is bit humping him, yeah. essentially. And then I just didn't have enough dance experience. I didn't know how to do that. And the director would have cut it anyway. The choreographer was like, yeah. But I'm like, what choreographer is like, guess community theater? People are here to see 16-year-olds hump in It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> that, yeah, like, what, what was the context of that move? But the fact that Rachel, it just made sense that Rachel would choreograph something like that. Because yeah. she's like, Shh. it's sexy, it's edgy. Also, like... She gets blamed for it, but also she was like, 
Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm as much to blame as you are. But, like, ultimately, he does punish her. By, by taking her song. Quinn. The, and Quinn's not going to be as good. Also considering that Quinn is, like, the head cheerleader and Glee is all that Rachel has. Cheerio. Excuse you. Cheerio. Also, the show starts on the Cheerios and then Sue. Yeah. And that was so weird. Like, that's the first note I wrote of, like, five things. I was like, oh, my God. Why are they starting on the Cheerios? I don't know. It was just a really strange... It's like, obviously, this is about high school. There's also another thing I thought was really strange and like a little on the nose, actually really on the nose. There were so many just monologues of people talking about like what they believe in and all of that in the first episode in the pilot. I'm like, "Mm, that's what's eh." strange is that like we don't get a lot of that for the rest of the show that's a very pilot-esque yeah. thing and i don't think we have a narrator after like the first few episodes like i don't think shu narrates much longer thank god yeah. but like yeah no it's like they wasted so much time they doing did. that kind of stuff They're like i just want to see these kids interacting and just like saying crazy shit i just i don't know like it definitely was, it's very clear that Shu was supposed to end up being, like, the protagonist when really it's Rachel Berry. Like, yeah. Rachel is the protagonist. She has the fit. strongest desire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was, I mean, she's the one that I'm most interested in in the entire pilot. So. Yeah, for sure. Like, in terms of, like, caring about people, I care about the people who got bullied. Like, I don't really care so much about Finn as I care about Rachel, I care about Kurt, and I care about Artie. Because he was trapped in that porta potty and that's traumatizing. <laughs> and then right after Finn rescues him, he goes into a monologue. It's great. Yeah, yeah. it's just like those are the only people like I cared about because they were actual underdogs. Like Finn yeah. wasn't necessarily an underdog yet. Also, Stephen Tobolowski. <laughs> May or may not have molested a student in the show, which is what got Shu into the position. And I literally was stunned. Like, I forgot that was even how it happened. And I was super uncomfy. Because there's. Then he turns into a drug dealer. Possession is eight tenths of the law. I'm pretty sure that much pot is a felony. Yeah. You'll get kicked out of school, you'll lose your football scholarship. Wait a football scholarship to, to where that was a good visual humor though like where he's like like dude like you've got all this pot on you like that's a felony and then literally the camera zooms in on this like poster it says like prioritize the children or something like that like help the children <laughs> and then he's like you could lose your football scholarship and Finn's like I got football a scholarship, scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah like that was that was some good humor but nothing was like laugh out loud it was it was dull. And also, yeah. the lighting was dull. That was yeah. something else we, like, we noticed. Like, the camera work was different. The lighting was definitely different. And then, like, things weren't as funny. Yeah. Second episode, took off. Like, I think, yeah, definitely way, way better. Do you have other... I'm going to move towards our, like, closing discussions. Do you have any other things in your notes? I'm going to go into the, our favorite songs and characters of the episode. Okay, let's... Let's do that, because I don't really have anything else. Okay, favorite song of these first two episodes? Push it. <laughs> it's quality. Are we talking about just, like, the song? Just, like, in the or show, how enjoyable numbers. it was. The music numbers. Okay, so, like, within the world of the show, what actually... And, okay. Um, yeah, so, like, probably... Shining Star doesn't count, because they yeah. didn't sing it. What? That was the song they used to open the second yeah. episode. The first episode. <laughs> Which I don't think they do going forward. They yeah. don't use like regular music. They no, you use... can't make iTunes money on regular music. <laughs> <laughs> Featured on Glee. Um, yeah, so what was your selection? Probably Push It too. 
I forgot how hilarious Push It was. I know. But I do think Don't Stop Believing is one of the most iconic moments in television. For sure. Like, so, yeah. I'm, I'm going with that. Okay. So. Least favorite song? Probably Gold Digger. <laughs> Oh yeah, gold digger, <laughs> gold digger. Yeah. Like I'm trying to think. I was like, I was gonna say it very confident, and I was like, was there another? No, no, yeah, just that gold one. Digger. Everything else was like pretty average. Like yeah, all right. Although, again, like you, I think someone was saying it was like, like you're rocking the boat or whatever the song's called. It actually wasn't too bad. It was kind of weird, but, like, I could yeah. listen to that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not the full version, but, like, a couple seconds. Yeah. Okay. Gold Digger for you, too? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, this is a pretty easy one. I remember uh, skipping it every time it came on, like, my Glee playlist. I'm like, no. Yeah, Glee fans don't seem like the people that want Matthew Morrison rapping Kanye. <laughs> who I think, who does? Thought? Who wanted that? <laughs> Did anyone ask for that? <laughs> I think Ryan Murphy was like, nah, I don't think we should do that. And Matthew's more than like, we should. The children are going to love it. I'll be so hip and cool. <laughs> All right. Least favorite LVP. Least, least valuable favorite. player. Terry Schuster. Fuck her. Oh my God. I hate She's her. the worst. Literally, no. Just that's it. For both episodes. She's probably going to win, like, every episode. Until that she in. dies. <laughs> she doesn't die. She doesn't. Does she? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah, Terry's the worst. She died in that one show that she was in, that actress that I watched. But, yeah. She did have that funny line about Dr. What, 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 what did Dr. Phil say? Dr. Phil said people can change. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Phil said people can change. I don't know. I would I think I laughed because I was like, oh, I don't like this. It's uncomfy. Most valuable player for me, Sue Sylvester, my ancestor. Sue Sylvester that, is great. That rhymed. Sue Sylvester, my, my ancestor. ancestor. I, was yeah, she was... I love her. Oh, just some, just some so moments good. that I will not be treated as a second class citizen because of my gender. <laughs> uh, oh. I don't menstruate, neither do I. <laughs> or... He, what did he say that she was like offensive? <laughs> he was like the top cock. He's being top cock. Oh yeah, cock your around. cock of the walk around here offensive. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> She's a quality actor. So here's the deal: you do with your depressing little group of kids what I did with my wealthy elderly mother. Euthanize it. It's time. Now I'll be happy to offer you a job as my second assistant on Cheerios. You can fetch me Gatorade, launder my soiled delicates. It'll be very rewarding work for you. You know what, Sue? I politely decline your offer. Glee Club is here to stay. I believe in my kids. I know you're used to being the cock of the walk around here. You're offensive. But it looks like your Cheerios are going to have some competition. Uh, you go first. This is hard, but I think I'm going to go with Finn. I think he's funny, and I care about his problems. Though I was thinking maybe Rachel, but I think these you'll get some peak Rachel later on in the show. Yeah, I think... I just love... Okay, I do want to say that like when they're kissing, which I forgot they kiss so early. They kiss in the second episode. And that was like... That was like a romantic... Yeah. Very, that wasn't like accidental or like, like a weird... It was yeah. like very intentional, like a slow like getting on top yeah. of her, like... Uncomfy. Her face, though, you could you can tell how much the character wanted this, and just her acting, you can just see how much she like yearns. Yeah. So now I might, I think I'm gonna go with Finn still, but Lee Michelle is great. What's interesting about Finn is that like, I have to take it in perspective of, like what I know of him right now, because like right now his problems are really small. They're about to get really big. And I think yeah. once that happens, he's going to go up the ladder for me because he does become more compelling as yeah. you meet his mom and get to know her and, like, understand what happens with him and Quinn. Like, he's definitely going to get up there. But, like, yeah. that's what's weird. It's like, he's real, his problems are really small right now and then they're going to explode. 
So I'm going to have to go with Rachel on this one. Okay. Because... She picked herself. (laughs) (laughs) We'll have to explain that. We were all giving characters, and apparently I was Rachel. Um, So she's the only person that I cared about in the pilot. Nowadays, being anonymous is worse than being poor. Fame is the most important thing in our culture now. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's that no one's just going to hand it to you. Like, out of everyone, yeah. she's the only one where I was like, yeah, I care about your problems. Um, and I really, I have no basis for the rest of the show at all. So, like, the fact that Finn's problems are going to get bigger right now, You're they're like, just kay. teeny tiny, and he's a dumbass, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> don't spoil. I, I, don't spoil. <laughs> I just can't. Take we were him talking seriously. about that. You and I were talking about. I'm like, he's so stupid. And you're like, but that's what makes him great. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I love a dummy. If he wasn't, if he was smarter, he wouldn't be as good of a character because he's supposed to be like the wholesome jock that we just love. Well, honestly, I feel like if he was smarter, Rachel would not be attracted to him because she has control issues. I can tell this already. Yeah. 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 No, you're 100% (laughs) right. Like, the people she ends up, like, possibly dating in the future is really kind of, like, it's ill-fated from the very beginning, I think, because of that element of her personality. That, like, she really has to be a very dominant feature in her relationships which is like fine yeah um how many lines did tina have did we count i think it was four is that the most lines she ever has <laughs> i think so i love uh tony award winner jenna Esquins. right who's given four lines and I, most of them are stuttering i love her character because she's always ignored and it becomes a joke and also because her and the guy who plays artie kevin McHale, have a podcast and whenever they have people yeah. on Glee and they talk about it, she doesn't remember, like, anything that happened. She's like, wait, was I there? She's like, I didn't watch that last season. I wasn't mm. that much. Like, she oh just does not remember. And so, like, Glee forgot about her, and so she, she forgot, forgot about, about Glee. Glee. I mean, honestly. Like, there was a line where Tina's like, okay, what am I supposed to do? And Finn's like, we'll figure it out. And I was like, spoiler alert, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and they just make her just sit in the back. Although, she does actually have a solo... That is actually one of my favorite songs, like, in the future. And I think that's when they started to realize, like, oh, like, we should use Tina, and then they forget about her again. Yeah, I think she gets, after people graduate, I think she might do more. I don't remember. I remember them graduating and me being like, uh... Okay, we're getting into territory here that I have no idea Yeah, let's not about. let's not dive too far in the future. I yeah. Still, yeah. I just, I hated the pilot, kind of, a lot. Now, looking back. So, like, I want to know, like, what is it that hooked me, like, when I first watched it? I think I actually just watched it because, like, my friend wanted me to watch it. And so I did. But I ended up getting into it. I don't think I was ever really hooked by the pilot. This is interesting because most people in all the other Glee podcasts I listen to as research, everyone's like, the pilot is so good and the second episode is such a downswing. So this, so, is, so this I, is a hot take. Whoa. Hot take. I think this is an upswing, and I think it really comes down to the fact that, like, it is the tone of the show. The pilot is not the tone of the show. Like, mm-hmm. the pilot is much more realistic in what it's expecting of its people. And, like, as the show goes on, it just expands into this craziness. Like I was saying, like, they're going to transfer schools, like, 800,000 times. <laughs> Like, if the pilot was the set of the show, like, that wouldn't happen. So, like, yeah. It's it's just, it has to be bananas. And I definitely think it's an upswing into the second episode. Because it just moves faster. I, it was so much more entertaining for me. The second yeah. episode was so much more entertaining. I think in the first episode, a lot of people wanted the show to be more kind of Friday Night Lights. Yes. And I think the show is trying to have it both ways, like be that kind of weird comedy and Friday Night Lights. Ew. And then eventually it be just this. I think the second episode, they're like, yeah, get rid of Friday Night Lights. We're a weird comedy. 
in a way that's kind of like kind of similar to Parks and Rec and the kind of like exploring the humor of this small town and the weird people that inhabit it. Yeah, I'm thinking about other events that go on in terms of that perspective that if it was supposed mm-hmm. to take on what the pilot intended, everything would be different. Yeah. I feel like it would also be like really watered down all the things that made it so colorful and wonderful yeah. to watch. Yeah. Well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> Upswing. So I guess we will, this will conclude. This concludes the first episode of Glee, of Glee Boot. Boot. Wait, I didn't say it. Let's do it again. <laughs> this concludes our first episode of Glee, Glee Boot. Boot. Okay, now it's your t- Now you have to spend five minutes turning it off. <laughs>